Well, here we go. Playoff time in the NFL, and we're delighted to be joined on the 33rd team by a man whose team is in really good shape heading into the postseason, 49ers kicker Robbie Gold. Robbie, thanks for being with us. First of all, do you guys even remember what it's like to lose? Uh, it's been a while, but you know this is a time where you don't want to lose. So whatever our 10-game winning streak that we're on, we want to make sure it's 14 because that means we ended up with a Super Bowl ring. Uh, but it's been a fun run. Uh, the team's been completely different from week one till now, and it's fun yeah. to see how the team's coming together in all three phases of football. Well, you guys, just so you know, you guys are the 13th team in the Super Bowl era to enter the playoffs on at least a 10-game run. Uh, three of the previous 12 went on to win the Super Bowl. So it's a good thing that there's 10-game winning streak, but it doesn't guarantee anything. How, how, how confident are you in this football team right now? You know, we're really confident. You know, I think if you look at our team, you get a guy like Christian McCaffrey added to Kyle Shanahan's play calling, who has completely changed our offense. I think we had the number one offense since we were we got Christian here in the trade from Carolina. Um, you know, Brock Purdy has stepped up and played really well as a rookie, getting the ball in space to playmakers like Debo and George. Uh, it helps to have the number one defense in the National Football League getting turnovers. And then our special teams units playing – uh, really well as one of the top five units in the league. So uh, in order to get on this streak and in order to play the way that we're playing, you have to play complementary football and we're limiting ourselves in penalties and uh, turnovers. You know, we're getting a lot of them, but we're not giving the ball away. And that's a formula for winning football. All right. You touched on a lot of stuff I want to break down a little bit here. Let, let's talk first about McCaffrey. How much did that change the way you guys ran that offense? Because since he became the starter, you guys haven't lost. And since he got there, you guys are 10 and 1. The only loss being to Kansas City, which we will get into. But how how much how much did Christian McCaffrey change everything for this team? Well, I think he changes a lot. One, he uh, brings a lot of professionalism to the locker room. Uh, the guy is an elite athlete that has some incredible vision with an awesome burst. Uh, he's really patient when he runs. Uh, but when you have a group uh, of younger running backs, uh, when you trade Jeff Wilson away, you know, obviously Raheem, you lose in free agency. Uh, what you've seen him be able to do with the young guys and teaching them uh, the offense and learning it as he's learning it, they're learning it. So uh, you've seen, you know, JP Mason and Ty Davis Price, and uh, you have Elijah Mitchell coming back healthy now after uh, his two injuries. And just seeing how that group cohesively has come together, I think has a lot to do with him. And then just his running style. I think it, it fits exactly what we're trying to do. Um, and, you know, I think he, we took him out, but I think he fell probably 40 or 50 yards short of 1,900 all-purpose yards. So when you have a guy that, that that's that dynamic, not only in the run game, but in a pass game, um, you've seen him throw a touchdown when we first got him against the Rams. I mean, there's a lot that this guy can do that I think opens up the playbook, but also stretches the defense uh, to help us run a lot of different plays for a lot of different players. No, he's had a thousand thousand season in the past. Uh, you mentioned Brock Purdy, and it's been one of the great stories from Mr. Irrelevant to leading the team down the stretch after the Jimmy Garoppolo injury. What is the thing that you noticed right away that impressed you the most about how Brock has handled his business? Well, I think just his confidence. You know, he's never really wavered as even in preseason. You saw him making plays and doing things, whether it was against the second team or the third team or against our defense on a regular basis. Uh, you know, he's taken some huge hits. He wasn't a hundred percent healthy the last time we played Seattle. Uh, you saw him step up and make some plays where he could barely throw the football. So I think just his grittiness and just the, the way that he prepares. Um, I think the other thing that's kind of underrated for him, I would say is just the, the pocket presence that he has to stand in there against some of the blitzes and make some of the big throws he has. And then if he does get in trouble, he has, he has really good speed and he has really good um, athleticism for a quarterback in a short area where he can get out of some of these pressures and, and make some plays. Uh, and I think, you know, he's, he's doing a great job of managing the game and everyone's playing around him very well on all three phases. Again, you know, we're having great field position with the punting game. We're making field goals uh, and doing some special things on special teams to help us. Um, but at the end of the day, we still have to make plays and it's winner go home now. Yeah. Um, what happens if Jimmy's healthy? Like, have you even thought about that? Because the, the, the whole thing was, Jimmy, you know, they didn't put him on IR. They didn't do all this stuff. They wanted to see – or, you know, they wanted to see if he might be able to be coming back and, and could be viable at some point in the postseason. 
Yeah, you know, I'm just glad I don't have to make those decisions. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think uh, what's unique, though, is to be able to have uh, two guys in a locker room that uh, can help us win a Super Bowl is, is pretty special. Uh, I think, you know, those guys have been awesome with each other in meetings all the time, helping each other out. And um, we'll, we'll be in a really good situation at, at that position, uh, no matter whether which way they decide to go. Are the Niners the only team that can win with anybody at quarterback? Well, listen, I think it takes a lot from Kyle Shanahan, who I think should be coach of the year. Uh, you know, you're talking about a lot of different candidates. Doug Peterson should be one. Um, you could, Nick Sirianni could probably be one based on what the Philadelphia Eagles have been able to do. But all in all, uh, if you look at what Kyle has been able to do with three different quarterbacks, becoming what would be later down the road, a number one offense in the National Football League with a, a, a rookie quarterback, um, I think Ben Roethlisberger might be the last person to kind of do what yeah. Brock Purdy has been doing. So, um, you know, I think Kyle going on a 10 game winning streak, putting us in a position to be the number two, number one seed at week 18. Um, you know, I think it speaks to the level of his ability to be able to coach uh, players at all levels. I mean, listen, we've had a lot of quarterbacks here in my career here in the six years we've been here and we've always found ways to win. That has a lot to do with his brilliance as an offensive play caller. You guys have the most unusual stat of the entire regular season. <laughs> Every team that played you and then played the following week lost. 0-15. The only team to win after playing the 49ers was the Chiefs, who had the benefit of the bye week, and they needed overtime against the Titans when they were led by Malik Willis. What is it about playing San Francisco that apparently took something out of everybody else? Yeah, there's just some teams in the National Football League that play more physical than others. You know, we pride ourselves on playing physical in all three phases. You know, fast and physical is how we want to play. Um, and I think, you know, that takes a toll on other teams just as much as it takes a toll on us. But I think if you're not used to playing that way, um, it's definitely going to take more out of you that week than it would be if your team is already physical. So uh, every brand of football is different from all 32 teams. And uh, I think that's just speaks to the character of all the guys we've had come in and play and, and, and really us playing to uh, what our standard is. And that's fast and physical. How much pride do you guys take in that, that when, when people ask you about that? Because that, that has to be, I mean, like football is all these things, but it is a physical grind. How much pride do the 49ers take in? Yeah, no one could hang after we took it at them. Yeah, I think you know, we didn't really start talking about it until about a month ago or three weeks ago. You know, it just kind of popped up out of the blue. I think it was when they said it was 0-12. So um, for us, I mean, it, uh, and the guys in the locker room are like, how cool is it that, you know, we're playing a brand that's taking something out of other teams. Uh, but to the, that's like an exclamation point for us saying that we are doing what we're supposed to do um, and how our standard is in the locker room. But, you know, what's crazy is, is we're playing well and we're on a winning streak. But there's so much more that we can give and there's so much more uh, that we can learn from and clean up in a, in a game. I mean, even yet yesterday, you know, the game was really close till halftime. Um, you right. know, offense took a little bit of time to get started. Defense let up the big play to get started uh, for a touchdown. I mean, there's small things. If we clean up and bring this thing together, it's going to be a fun team to watch throughout the, the whole playoff run. Well, let's start with that first game. Uh, it's obviously an opponent you know well. What are the challenges in that situation? Well, anytime you play a team three times in a row, it's difficult, especially in the division. Uh, it's a team that we've been very familiar with that, you know, we went on the goal line to go in 19, win the division. Um, you know, we played them uh, this year twice, one time in prime time and another time early in the season when they're coming off a Monday night game. And, you know, these games are always physical and uh, I'm sure they're going to have a game plan based off some of the things that they didn't do the last two times against us that, we're going to have to be ready for them. We're going to have to adjust on the fly. And, um, you know, teams this late in the year are stacking the box to try to make us throw the ball with Purdy, and he's been doing a great job. And then defensively, we just got to stick to the game plan, and everyone's got to do their job and, and do it well. And hopefully on special teams, we, we were a game changer and help them with field position. All right, last thing for me, because I know your time is precious. You've been doing this a long time for uh, – at a very, very high level. You, you've been to the mountain twice and haven't quite gotten there. Um, what would it mean for you this late in your career to, to finally be able to claim the one thing that has escaped you, a Super Bowl ring? 
Well, it mean a lot to me. Obviously, the other two hurt. You know, I've been to four NFC championships. Those hurt just as bad as the two losses because you know how close you were. Last year, we were 10 minutes away and an interception away and a couple other plays away from being in another Super Bowl here. Um, in the Super Bowl, we were up on Kansas City Chiefs with, you know, I think our first punt came at the nine or six minute mark and we gave away yeah. a 10 point lead there. So, um, you know, these are some things that we've talked about as a team that, you know, we have unfinished business from 19 and some of these guys haven't even been here uh, before with yeah. us or haven't been on those streaks. So, you know, when you talk about some of those things, guys in the locker room start believing and they start understanding why we're doing what we do every day. Um, and for me, these are moments when um, they don't come around often. And then when you have a team like this that's gelling and playing well and playing hot and you want to play your best football uh, at the end of the season, getting ready for January, um, you're thankful that you, you have this opportunity and you don't want to take it for granted. So it would mean a lot to me. And um, it'd be more unique, I think, this time around because my kids are older uh, and I could share it with them, which um, has been a lot of fun for them to be at the games and, and be around it. So uh, we'll definitely be throwing confetti a lot if, if we win. In a dream scenario, in light of what happened the last time you were there and in light of what happened the last team to beat you, in Robbie Gold's dream situation, is it you play Kansas City and you kick the field goal to finally take them down? Uh, you know, I don't really care who it is as long as we win. I don't care if it's close or if it's a blowout. Um, I think, you know, just knowing how hard it is to get to that game and then win that game, just having fallen short twice. Um, this year, you know, you just got to focus a little bit more and not make the mistakes uh, and make the plays when we need them the most. And uh, hopefully by the end of the playoff run, we'll be Super Bowl champions. Well, we'll see how it all plays out. You guys do come in on a heater. Robbie, thanks for your time, man.